What we're going to be going over here is a net operating loss where we have a carry back and a carry forward on this operating loss here. And we're also going to have to set up a valuation allowance for this net operating loss. Okay, so this is going to be our example here. We're going to be given our pre-tax income here for four years here, years 20x1 through 20x4, and also the tax rate for each of those years here. So what we're going to be looking at here is year 20x3, where we're going to have this net operating loss of $300,000. Now everything is shown here in thousands of dollars. And we're going to be able to take this $300,000 net operating loss and carry it back two years here. And then if there's anything remaining here on the operating loss, we'll be able to carry it forward here and I'm just showing five years here but whatever we would set up for our whatever the government says that we would be allowed here for the carry forward but we're just looking at two years here and the carry back so let's first deal with this loss carry back here so uh, we can offset our income here that we already paid taxes on our 20x1 and our 20x2 income here so uh, what we would have for our tax benefit or what we'd be getting back here as a tax refund uh, for this loss carry back would be the 44,000 here times the 35 percent tax rate that we paid plus the 96,000 times the 50 percent tax rate that we would have paid on it. So a total amount here that we paid in taxes was $63,400 for the loss carry back. So that's what we're going to get a refund on. Now let's look at uh, the next year here. This 300,000 we still have a remaining loss that we can carry forward here. So this is how we calculate that. You take your $300,000 worth of net operating loss and subtract out what we already uh, deducted here for the carry back of 44000 and 96000 So we have a loss carry forward of $160,000. Now we can take that times the 40% tax rate. So that's what we're going to be paying here in uh, pre-tax income in the future, a tax rate of 40%. So $160,000 times the 40% tax rate gives us $64,000 thousand here in the of a deferred tax asset that we're going to set up here for this loss carry forward. Okay, so let's go first look here at 20x3 how we'd record it here. So uh, what we're going to set up here, we'll start with this what we have refundable here as a tax refund because remember we already paid taxes on this uh, in 20x1 here and 20x2 of these these amounts here so what we calculated that to be uh, was $63,400 so that's going to be our tax refund so we debit our tax refund here on our balance sheet as a receivable for $63,400 remember it was these amounts here that $44,000 on the year 20x1 times the tax rate of 35% and 96,000 times the uh, year two here uh, times the tax rate of 50%. So debit your tax refund here for $63,400. And then we're going to have uh, record here a tax benefit due on our income for the loss carry back. And again, these are contract counts. These re reduce the con uh, tax expense. So we credit that here for uh, the tax benefit due for $63,400. Okay, so we've taken care of our tax refund here and our tax benefit due to the loss carry back. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at the, we're gonna have to set up this tax benefit due to the loss carry forward. Again, it's a contract count that reduces our tax expense. So what we had set up here we have to set up the deferred tax asset. That was that debit amount here of $64,000. Remember, we calculated it up here for the loss carry forward. So that we'd set up as a deferred tax asset here on our balance sheet account, again, on year 20X3, and then to the back tax benefit due on our income statement here for the loss carry, uh, loss carry forward, again, that a contract account. That was that $300,000 here less the 44,000 and we use for year X1 and 96,000 for year X2 times that 44 40% tax rate so a credit amount here uh, $64,000 here for the tax benefit due on our income statement. Okay, so we've taken care of our, for this loss carry forward where we had set up our deferred tax asset and our uh, tax benefit due to it. Okay, so now this is where we're going to have to set up an allowance account, a deferred tax asset allowance account, because let's just say, for example, we're estimating here that 25% of the loss carry forward will not be realized. 25% of this tax benefit due here due to the 
loss carry forward isn't going to be realized. So 25% of the 64,000 gives us $16,000 here. And that's based on a greater than 50% chance that we're not going to be able to realize uh, at least 25% of this deferred uh, this deferred tax asset here. So what we have to do is we have to set up a deferred tax asset allowance account. This is a contra account to our deferred tax asset account. So what we would do is we'd credit that here for $16,000, simply what we calculated here, 25% of this $64,000 here of that tax benefit due. So credit that here for, for the deferred tax allowance account, set that up here, credit that here for $16,000. Remember that reduces our deferred tax asset. And then the debit would go to our tax benefit due. We would debit that here for $16,000. So that reduces our tax benefit due to the loss carry forward. Okay, so we set up our deferred tax allowance account. Now let's go and look at how we'd record it here on our income tax expense section here on the income statement, again for year 20X3. Okay, so here we're sitting. We have this net operating loss before income taxes here of $300,000. Now we would list here, we'd take our income tax benefit. Okay, so what we would do here, we'd have the benefit due to the loss carryback that was at $63,400. And then benefit due to the loss carry forward. Well, we have to reduce it by that amount of the deferred tax allowance of 16,000. So we have the 64,000 due to the uh, tax benefit due, subtract, reduce it by the 16,000. So our net benefit due to the loss carry forward would be $48,000. So our income tax benefit that we have, we just sum those two amounts, 63,400 plus the 48,000 gives us $111,400. So that we would, uh, be subtracting here or reduce our operating loss before income taxes of 300000 by that amount here due to the income tax benefit, due to the uh, loss carry back and the loss carry forward. So our net loss would be $188,600. Okay, so we've taken care of year, year 20X3 where we had that net operating loss of $300,000. Now let's go and let's look at year 20X4 here. This is where we're going to be carrying forward uh, that what our net operating, our amount of loss that we can carry forward here. So for year 20X4, we're going to have pre-tax income of 180,000 here. So let's look at what we do here. So what we would do here, we're going to we're going to have these accounts. We're going to have our deferred tax asset that we're going to be able to use up here, and then we're going to have a tax payable, the current amount of our taxes that we're due here in 20X4. And then based on a deferred tax asset and our payable, we're gonna have our tax expense that's gonna go to our income statement. Okay, so you can look at our tax expense first from this uh, perspective here. So we have $180,000 of pre-tax income here times the 40% tax rate for the year. So that's gonna give us 72,000 here in tax expense on our income statement. Again, for year 20X4. Now, we have to determine what our tax payable, that's gonna be the current amount here and we'll see if we have any, uh, how we use up our deferred tax assets. So looking at it here, 20X4, pre-tax income, that was $180,000. Then we had the loss carry forward here uh, that amount was remaining here um, due to for, for, that we have we can clear forward here of a hundred sixty thousand dollars. So the difference here gives us taxable income here of twenty thousand dollars times our tax rate of forty percent. So that gives us our tax payable of eight thousand dollars. Now you can see here. Oh, We'll record our tax payable here, but you can see here that we have enough income, the hundred eighty thousand here of income, to realize that um, our total deferred tax asset, because we had the loss carry forward that deferred tax asset was based on that here of 160,000, uh, was based on 160,000 of the lot, total loss carry forward. So we have enough income here. 180,000 is greater than our loss carry forward of 160,000. So we have enough income to realize the deferred tax asset, and we're not going to need the deferred tax allowance account because we we were able to realize it here in the year 20x4. Okay, so let's look at just recording it real quickly here. So we had 
our current amount of our tax payable, we figure that to be $8,000 here. So credit your tax payable here for $8,000. We determine our tax expense here to be $72,000. So this is where we can use up the total deferred tax asset. You can look at it either based on your pre-tax income here versus your loss carry forward or just looking at it as a balancing amount between the 72,000 here in tax expense and your 8,000 here in tax payable. So debit here 72,000, credit of 8,000 here. So you need another crediting amount here. You can use that total deferred tax asset. You had a debit here at 20X3 is 64,000. Now for 20X4, you could just credit it all out, use it all up you got a zero balance here in your deferred tax asset, so $64,000. So what you're sitting with here, you can see everything balances out. Your tax expense on your income statement, $72,000 here, uh, balances with the credit of your tax payable of $8,000 here, plus the credit or reduction of your deferred tax asset of $64,000. Okay, so we've taken care of our entries here for year 20X4. Now let's go down here and look at how we'd recorded on the income tax expense section here on our income statement. Now, this is the case here. You remember, we're not going to need uh, this deferred tax allowance account anymore here because we were able to use it up because we had enough uh, income to cover the carry forward amount or carry forward of the lost carry forward amount. Okay, so we start out with our income before taxes. That was the 180000 here. Now we start with our income tax expense. Remember, the current portion was our tax payable here of $8,000. And then we have, we would list our deferred tax asset here. That was the $64,000 here. Okay, so then we would also, this is what you have to show here. You have to show your loss carry forward. That was the $16,000. So that's going to reduce your income tax expense. You have the current amount here of $8,000. The deferred amount that you used up here is $64,000. Reduced by the $16,000 here of the loss carry forward. So your net amount here of income tax expense is going to be $56,000. So reduce taking compare to your income before taxes 180,000 less your income tax net expense here 56,000 your net income is going to be 124,000 dollars but what we have to look at here when we you understand what this loss carry forward how that works when you also have to make the recordings here so that uh, deferred tax allowance account you're not going to need it here you're going to remove it off the books because you had enough pre-tax income to absorb that loss carry forward we said we didn't think we would originally of 25 we assumed that 25 percent of the 64,000 may not or we thought or estimated that wouldn't be used but now we're able to use it all so you would had a credit here of 16,000 you debit it out here 16,000 remove your deferred tax allowance and then they uh, other thing that you would do your tax benefit on your income statement here your for your loss carry forward remember we had reduced that here by 16,000 here due to the deferred tax allowance account now we're able to realize it so what you had you had the debit here 16,000 now you go and you credit it here for 16,000 so we're able to use the tax benefit due here for the loss carry forward because we had enough income. Okay, so these are the other two entries that you'd have to make uh, in conjunction with your tax expense, your tax payable, and your deferred tax asset that we looked at. So just remember here for, and this is for that carry forward year here, 20X4 here, remember you have to break your income tax expense uh, section down here between the current amount whatever you had used up in your deferred amount here that was the deferred tax asset here and then we reduced it because we were uh, didn't the we were able to use that total loss here so what we initially estimated where we weren't going to be able to use 25 percent of loss carry forward now we would reduce here our income tax expense by that section because we were able to use the total deferred tax asset. Okay, so that's what you do here. So just remember, uh, that's how you got to handle here when you're dealing with these carry backs and these carry forwards here, where you have to set up these allowance accounts. You have had we not been able or had we not been able to use all that deferred act tax asset here then we wouldn't have been subtracting out this law or reducing our loss carry forward here for the deferred tax allowance we'd have to set up some amount here but in the case here where we were able to use it all 
then we would reduce our deferred tax allowance by that amount here and also increase our tax benefit by whatever we had reduced it by due to the estimate on our uh, estimate on that allowance account here for the deferred tax asset. Okay, so that'll uh, sum up our discussion here on this topic where we had a net operating loss carry back and carry forward and we have to set up an valuation allowance account for that net operating loss.